Welcome to the Detail in Bay podcast. I'm Rich. And I'm Dave. And on this channel, we're going to discuss in a quite light-hearted way. We don't take ourselves too seriously, do we, Dave? But no. we've got a YouTube channel. You're going to be able to find us on Apple, um, on iHeartRadio, on Spotify. And we're just having nice, gentle discussions about detailing products. Yeah. Products, kit, in quite a... DIY, it's sort of aimed to the DIY user. Yeah, a bit it, more, uh, yeah. It, not going overly technical yeah. uh, as best we can, really. Keeping so, it light hearted. Yeah. So you don't have to Google afterwards to, to yeah, understand what we've exactly. just gone on about. It's all about having a bit of fun yeah. while we're detailing. Yeah, and jo- yeah, bring a bit of joy back into it, I guess. Exactly. So on this first episode, shall we go straight in with our first video that we're going to be uploading to YouTube? which should be coming out this week, Yeah, which was all around snow foam. There are loads of snow foams on the market, with the basics pretty much the same regardless of the one you choose. They work by lifting dirt away from the paint, making it a safe way to pre-wash your car. Applied through a foam lance, attached to a pressure washer, they apply a layer of foam onto the paint surface, give them a few minutes dwelling time and then rinse off. You're then left with paint that is free from loose dirt, debris and ready for a good wash. For anyone who's not seen the video, we tested two snow foams, didn't we? We got yeah. built Hamber auto foam, which is like raving. With yeah, we went, we went for a heavy alkaline as a cleaning base, and then we went for a pH neutral one, which has a little bit more science in it, yeah. in how it's going to break down the dirt and so so on. Yeah, uh, the reason we went with the auto foam one is not just because it's a pH 14, so it's like right at the end. Well, it, was it pH 12 to 14? It was a heavy alkaline yeah. anyway. But... The reason we went for that as well is because that's one of the best selling and got the best reviews, hasn't it? It has, yeah. And I wonder whether it was just because it's so concentrated that you can water it. It's good value for a starter. Absolutely, Decent yeah. size bottle. And because of that pH value, you can water it down quite a lot and stretch yeah. it. So I, I, in, I initially went into that a bit sceptical. Then I was like a bit more siding on the Valley Pro Snow Foam. Yeah. Uh, or what's it called again? Sorry, the Valley Pro one? pH neutral pH snow neutral. foam. Yeah, which it was. It was pH 6, 7, yeah. wasn't it? Um, because I, I was like you thinking that that's going to have more technical active ingredients in you know they've not just kicked it full of a very caustic ingredient yeah they've just not just clean. gone for strength which a lot yeah. of the cheaper ones go for it had a yeah a bit of science behind it whereas you just want to soften that dirt make mm. it safe to remove i want to get as t- close to, to a touchless clean as possible yeah um which i thought the valet pro one were doing it didn't it turned out that the auto foam actually did a better job didn't foam up as thick did it it was very watery yeah it's a looser one did it do a better job? It, it depends what your angle is. If you're really into your waxes mm. and you you know you clean it down, you're doing your pre-wash and you put it on there, it's done a better job in terms of yeah, it's cleaned more. But what's it taken as well? That is true. And on the car that we tested it on, that was PPF, wasn't it? It was, yeah, just Which for coatings are not the best on, on, on that car at the moment so we don't know actually how it affected no but you can you, you you'll know from the like the chemical makeup of both of them that yeah the built hamber will have interfered with the uh, if you are into your waxes and sealants it will have interfered with them more than the valet pro ph neutral would yeah, have that's what i'm saying we didn't really get to that point in the test did we because no. there was no real lsp on that no car. there wasn't no so what kind of stuff should you expect from a snow foam? Obviously, in the name, it's same foam. When yeah. you see on Instagram or when you see someone using a the foam, they look quite impressive when they're yeah. really thick foam, like shaving foam, and a lot they dwell longer. So in your head, you think the, the foamier, the better. It's not always the case, though, is it? No, the there's, doesn't there's so many different, so many different arguments, and a lot of them is <laughs> tomato, tomato, sort of, like mm. people who want a really thick foam, other people say, no, it's a loose foam. Then you've got people who say, pre-rinse the car first. Others say, don't, because it clings. That's another good point, yeah. And I think once you, you've got an argument on both sides for each one. So if you put onto a dry car and it's a fo- quite a foamy one, it will cling better. Mm. But then someone else is saying, well, if you go around it first, jet it down, you're getting rid of an additional amount of dirt, then going with the foam, but the foam's now sitting already on a, on a wet panel. You know, is that going to dilute it slightly more? And and I think ultimately you get into that level where you could lose hours and hours and hours, and ultimately the outcome 
would be marginal, if not yeah. any different. So just do with what you're comfortable, what makes sense to you. Because I, I would always wet it first, blast as much of that dirt off as I can, and yeah. then foam it. Yeah, well, this is well, this is the problem now. We we could literally go for hours, yeah. and and you also get people that say, you know, is snow foam an essential? And well, yeah. Sorry to cut you off, but like, where do you draw the line between using like an all-purpose cleaner, like a heavy like TFR compared to a heavy alkaline snow foam? I mean, snow foams are supposed to be there to be a little bit more of a technical product rather than a cheap, horrible, you know, acid oil. Yeah. Um, and it, and they obviously they foam so they dwell so they clean for longer rather than something that's just going to sh run straight off. But then if you're not bothered about a foam from a snow foam, why don't you just use a APC? You could do, but say if you're in the not in you in the industry, you will get some people, especially if you're doing a lot of work on the car and it's not maintenance, that will use APCs for that initial rinse and it mm. will clean a lot off. The issue is if you package that out there for people to use the big risk you've got is you're continuously doing that on your own car every couple of weeks every month you're going to start impacting other parts of it the plastics the rubbers yeah like when you see sort of the that black finish yeah because the, the, the apcs are a lot stronger than snow foams are and, and granted you could dilute them down and keep going as far as you can mm. but you're putting more trust in that the, the end user doing that and getting it correct and it also create more worry for people so bottling it for the purpose of being a snow foam and getting it to a level mm. is 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 the better approach really yeah it's the it's the safer approach as well isn't it yeah you're gonna you, like you say after 12 months of cleaning your car apc versus a gentle snow foam you're definitely going to notice the difference like you said not just on the the wax or, or your um, ceramic coating but also those little bits that can get a bit tarnished a bit of trim yeah. might be a little bit faded in place yeah yeah the the the, the risk so yeah you you want to stick to a foam unless you really know what you're doing yeah because it just makes it easier for that continuous maintenance that you're going to do mm. another one is uh, with, with foam while we're talking about foam is um, if you haven't got a foam land, then is there any other way of doing it? And there is, isn't there? There's yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, lot you can of foam, good yeah. quality spray it foamers. On yeah, the and now. some of them aren't hideously expensive either. Like IK do a really good one. Um, I think it's sub thirty pound, and that actually works really, really well. And I know a few detailers that actually do that over setting all the gear up, yeah. so they go around it on a dry car. Um, let it dwell and then you know the, the normal process but then you can go even further you've seen them you can get the big pressure pump ones yeah. but you can get even more and they can produce impressive foam do you know what I actually used the IK one you're talking about in fact this, that's quite a complicated range the IK but even the really good sprayers yeah but they have a lot that overlap don't they so they've got the foam um, it's I think it's a pro foam 2 uh, but then they do a pro, pro foam 2 plus which you've got like um you, you can add air to it yeah instead of having to pump it yeah you can you can start and I, I think again some of them you can just keep it really simple with like the the handheld ones or just the standard cylinder pump one which will get you uh, get you all around the car or if you're feeling posh you can get the battery ones as well can't you That's but yeah right. the foams all work brilliant through them yeah they do they work better because you're actually if you want to dilute them exactly and make sure yeah, what's you're not coming introducing out, more water yeah, exactly make sure what's coming out of that nozzle is exactly what you've diluted it yeah that's the way to do it and i used one the other day and i were it was on a white car that's not been washed for about three months um and i was really surprised how well it did i thought well this snow foam i use it a lot and i thought that's worked a lot better yeah coming out of that and, and dwelling find it cling to more it wasn't as thick of a foam as you'd get with that high pressure coming out of your the jet mm. wash, uh, but it just did a better job of cleaning. Yeah, and I think it's because it's more, it, it's less diluted. I mean, how do you, what equation do you have to use to work out actually? Say yeah. you've done ten to one dilution. By the time you've thrown, you'd have to you work would. out the flow rate of the water. You would. So the way I always understood it is to keep it simple. You could fill your dilution bottle with neat solution, then wind back your foam gun so it's yeah. the you know it's pulling the, the least amount so the maximum amount of water you'd have to know your flow rate um which by filling buckets you know how many liters per minute it's mm. outputting 
then do the equation which is way above my head without a pen and paper mm. of, of of where you'd be at and i do know again i know details that work that way where they just put it in neat but once you've done it once it's never going to you know and, and you're at a fixed location it's not going to change too much for that to ever be an issue yeah. you can carry on and then you're not continuously changing your solution you just keep it in the no bottle idea. yeah that does make sense actually putting it in neat to me I've never done that. Well, yeah, because it is going to dilute it. You've just got to remember that y you want to open that valve. You want as much water going through it because if you crank it the other way, you're not necessarily going to get an even better clean action. It is going to be stronger, but you're just going to end up with it like shaving cream. You, you are at that point wasting product. But how do you reckon? Yeah, 100%. It, it looks good. It makes brilliant videos, even sounds good. Mm. But, yeah, th Quite there's a point there. Isn't it, when you've if you think you've got that layer that's clung to the car, anything after that is just sitting over the top. If you're not spraying it back onto uh, an exposed area, it's it's not going to add anything additional no, to like it. So they just look good. I do a bit of Instagramming with this kind of stuff. So and you can't beat like a slow motion reel of. Oh a nice yeah, they do. They look good. It's satisfying because it. it's that uh, lights on, lights off sort of thing. Because suddenly you can't, you can't recognise what it is. It's covered in foam, yeah. and then that satisfying one. You start jetting it off, and then your car appears again. And but yeah, it's a little uh, little over the top. <laughs> <laughs> So this project car we've got, Dave. Yeah. Golf R32. It's uh, the Mark IV, the best one. The better one. Yeah. And just coming up for 100,000 mile, in it? Yeah, just a touch off it. And it's nearly 20, I think February, in about, in about a month's time, it's uh, 20 years old. Yeah. So we've decided we're going to treat that as our project car. Our Golf R32 is just one of 87 and is coming up to its 20th birthday. It's not a barn find, but it is a car that is in need of some love. In terms of the mods, it's had its fair share. It's got coilovers, it's got a Scorpion exhaust, and paint-wise, it's not too bad, but after 20 years, it'll definitely benefit from some paint correction. We want to bring that indigo blue back to its eye-popping self. The interior isn't too bad for a 20-year-old car, but there are obvious signs of wear and tear on the upholstery and carpets, and they'll definitely need a deep clean. So, we've decided we're going to treat that as our project car. Uh, we're not going to be doing anything, we're not like, rebuilding it from the ground up or anything no. are we we're not overhauling it um but just using detailing products which any diy user can yeah. buy and and use on the driveway or in the garage we're going to see how far we can sort of restore yeah kind of like simulating if just man on the street had gone and you know thought you know i've got a bit of cash always wanted it doesn't have to be a, an r32 that's just our choice but whatever car realizing how further on you can bring it mm. just with you know easily accessible tools and products. yeah and how much value you can add back into a car i mean absolutely a golf r32 is always going to hold a bit of value yeah you know they're going up but like you say something that's not a classic even if it's just an old car it is quite interesting to see how much value you can add back in just by off the proper yeah. cleaning definitely so yeah we, we've got a we're going to split that up into a few different episodes which you'll be able to see on our youtube channel and, and various other channels but we've got Various episodes, first one we've just filmed, which will be coming out shortly, is the decontamination wash stage, yeah. which we've done outside. We've now got that to a stage where we're happy to bring it in and start with the, the tar remover. Claying it. Claying it. Getting it yeah. prepped for machine polishing. Exactly. Um, and it will probably, it's not that bad, the paintwork. It's had a little bit of paintwork here and there. And again, we're not going to be repainting it, are we? No, we just want to... we what's there. Let's get as far as we can get it. Yeah. We're expecting some sanding marks. Um, it's not overly swirly, but that paint can definitely come back a lot more than it currently sits. Yeah, we noticed that there might be a little run in the lacquer somewhere. Yeah, there's well. a couple of runs in We can in probably it, yeah. tackle that as well. Yeah. A lot of people don't realise you can, you don't, that doesn't need repainting. If we can flatten that out with some wet and dry yeah. and then and machine that back as well and correct it. Um, so yeah, there's more than you think. That You can do more than you think really, just using yeah. compounds, machine polishers and chemicals, can't you? Absolutely, yeah. Some people look at it and go, oh, that needs paint, mm. just straight off. And then you start looking, you get calls from body shops. It's like, wow, this is spiraling out of control. Mm. But in reality, yeah, with tools, you know, even a couple of hundred pounds, you could throw it and how different you can make the paint mm. is just... 
and even say. if you're in you've never done machine polishing before and you, you could be quite intimidated couldn't you thinking right this is how much money am i gonna have to spend how many different compounds and different stages do i need to go through and don't get me wrong like at the pro end you can you you can go in a detailer studio and they've got multiple machines yeah they've got every compound through every stage but for a diy user you can buy like budget end machines which are going to be safe the dual action you're not going to burn through your paint accidentally no, yeah. if you follow the instructions uh, and you've also got like one all in one compound things like menzerna's cut force pro which basically it's like a nine cut and a nine finish and to the untrained eye that's going to look like it's been through multi-stage correction isn't it yeah absolutely yeah it's so, only when you really get down to the nitty-gritty can you see that oh you can push it a little bit further but it's all how far you want to go really it but is those 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 absolute like 10 out of 10 that final little bit when it comes to paint correction only in the correct stew i mean you will tell but only when uh, to a tra the trained eye like in the right i was down at the men's Erna training place and he was showing me that that's nine out of ten right now and to mm -hmm. most people that would be absolutely flawless uh, and then he got another light out and you could just see some slight imperfections yeah which it, it, simulating um, artificial light, uh, a big one is um, forecourt lighting yeah, and car parks and that, yeah, color temperatures and the same applies to the sun in dirt, certain light. Yeah. It, 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 they all bring out different angles. and. So for somebody listening to this, watching this, who's thinking about starting their own project uh, on their own car, where do you start? Is it, is it, you know, jet washers, is it, foam stuff is it well everybody will be different it? some people might have a little bit of care others will have absolutely nothing um so it, the products you see being used in the video you know you'll see that there's not as many products as you imagine because if you go onto a website or if you google it or you ask people you'll get hundreds of people throwing in this product that product mm. but but that's where we come in trying to simplify it, isn't it? Yeah, it is as simple as where do you start? So we've explained you don't necessarily even need a pressure washer, but that does make your life a lot easier. And that is probably, other than a, a like a polishing machine, I'd say mm. a pressure washer is the other, if you want to make your life easier and make sure you do get that deep clean, a pressure washer would be the next most important yeah, so thing. If, if we are saying basic equipment that to get the most out of it, you're going to need, we're yeah. talking pressure washer and you might as well add on the foam lance on that uh, and a machine polisher yeah and we'll probably talk more in more detail when we do come to correction and um the tool like the various budgets that you can you can have yeah um because yeah. yeah. as you go along you actually start to use so when, when, when you start off the car's dirty it's on the drive you're gonna have like probably five or six types of liquids from your tar removers to your pre-washes uh you fallout removers and so on but as you slowly get towards the end and you get to the polishing stage it starts whittling down to your left you know you, you have a couple of compounds maybe a finishing a cut in it yeah. does get less as you go along it's not a case of you've got seven eight products for the cleaning side and then once you get it ready for polishing you're going to need seven or eight products for doing that as well it's mm. not the case and a lot of people like to use this like three stage four stage five stage and it confuses people so much and it, it's up to what your eye can see the single stage you know take it as far as you are i think that's with. a fair way to put it yeah like, if, if you're looking at that car and, and you're thinking i'm well happy with that i can't think of how i'm going to improve it it's kind yeah. of job done yes you could take that to a, a pro detailer and they'll go no actually under this light you've got certain swell but yeah that's a fair way to put it Well, that's a wrap for this episode. Thanks very much for listening. Make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, uh, because on the next episode, we'll be discussing wax. Yeah. <laughs>